Greetings. Um, I decided to make this video for myself, um, basically to uh, remind myself of how to do things um, when senility, senility uh, creeps in and um, Alzheimer's and all the other things that cause you to uh, forget stuff like alcohol and things. Anyway, um, whilst making this I suddenly thought, well, others might be suffering the same issues and so um, I'll put this on YouTube so people can um, see it and it might help um, one or two. Okay, FR Sky and the uh, voltage, current and Vario uh, sensors all um, have updates for their firmware available and whilst I was um, looking into how to do this I also discovered that if you want to use multiple uh, sensors that they all have to be uh, physically um, identified uh, with a unique number and it turns out that the voltage sensors all come shipped as two so if you need to run two voltage sensors you're going to have to change its physical ID so um, here's how you go about doing that and also updating the firmware now I'm going to make some assumptions <coughs> that is um, you know how to um, use your PC and um, that you also have a download cable now this is from um, T9 Hobby Sports and um, what I found is if you buy this little beast here uh, which is the FreeSky uh, USB data cable and also this adapter cable <coughs> which includes a diode uh, on the TX line um, you should be good to go for less than 10 quid now some of you might already have this cable and you might want to do a mod in which case if you have a look at this, now this is the instructions that come with the firmware um, so you can have a quick look and it does almost get you there um, so there's some very specific things that you need to do and it does sort of mention them here this goes into the um, S port of your sensor or uh, again if you want to do your um, receiver it will go into there this is the uh, adapter with the little diode sitting here here USB um, interface so um, in case you want to rustle it up yourself <coughs> here's the diagram and um, you can see they just put a diode in the TX line which basically um, feeds uh, data that way and stops it coming back that way right okay that being the case let's go back to the uh, FR Sky site. What you're going to need to download, and it's very important that you do all of this, is the drivers for Windows XP, the drivers for Windows 7, um, this uh, upgrade uh, light telemetry, and the S port tool. Okay, so once you've downloaded them, put them in a safe place. Now I'm running Windows on a Mac using Parallels. Now it could be that that process of using a virtual machine um, is causing some issues. But basically when I go to run this software for upgrading the firmware, it will not find uh, the COM port. Same as this one, it also doesn't find the COM port. Um, however, I found a way around that. So once you've downloaded these, run the drivers uh, so uh, your system is now fully updated um, obviously these will only run from inside of Windows so make sure you do so <coughs> then you go to um, the FR Sky um, firmware page and if I go back there maybe upgrade to firmware. firmware here we go so here's um, basically uh, all the firmware you can get um, for all the FR Sky stuff. We're interested in these three at the moment, which is the uh, current sensor, the voltage sensor, and uh, the Vario. Although you can do um, receiver and the uh, transmitter as well. Okay, so download all of these. Now, one thing to be um, mindful of is, this says download here, 
but as you might notice it's version history so this is an old one so what you need to do is make sure you get this um, however I've noticed that there is no version number um, for the very own, which will actually uh, become apparent when you have a look at the um, software a bit later on okay so uh, again and um, this one just download it make sure you know exactly where it is because that is really really important right so assuming you have the uh, USB cable you have the software and you have the firmware um, let's get this thing started so um, I go into my uh, windows and then I go to my downloads and then for my downloads I find the upgrade adapter which is there now you can try this click it open it and see if you have a com port if you do it might work for you um, however I couldn't get it to work so what I do now is right click go to troubleshoot uh, compatibility let the program um, have five minutes, give it the um, uh, test compatibility, compatibility, and then um, notice that the XP uh, Service Pack 2 is now being used, which is why we downloaded it in the first place. Start the program, and you'll notice this. Now, basically, COM ports appeared, which is great because I wasn't getting that before. And what it's asking for now is one is the file. And once you have the file, you're going to have to um, then connect your uh, piece of uh, hardware, i.e. the sensor, and then hit download. Now there's only one problem that I found here, and that is if you don't do it in a quick enough time, um, it times out and you start again. Now that time seems to be variable, but um, it doesn't appear to be very long. So let, let's see if this one's going to work. So I go to File, um, and then go to my Downloads. I then go to uh, Firmware for the voltage sensor. It's now looking for the voltage sensor, so I now plug the voltage sensor in, and then hit Download. And lo and behold, it's all worked. <clears throat> now, on many of the occasions, it hasn't worked, but because I know where my uh, software is or firmware is, I can get there a lot quicker. You might want to put it somewhere a lot easier to get to. And you also might find that you don't have the issue whatsoever. Um, so once this is running, um, you're updating your um, sensor. And, and from there, yeah, you can move on to the next phase, which is interrogating the sensor. And for that, um, we need the other piece of software that you downloaded, which was called the uh, S-Port Tool. And again, do exactly the same thing. Right click, do troubleshoot compatibility. Uh, yeah, again, you can try to see whether or not it's gonna work in the first place um, without having to go through this. And if it does, that's brilliant. If not, this is the way to go. So again, it's opened using XP. Um, and those drivers, hit the start, and here we have our piece of software. So um, all we have is this saying uh, firmware is updated, so we can now end this process. Now if you have a Vario, it's exactly the same process. If you have the current sensor, again, it's exactly the same process. So once you've got everything uh, with the latest firmware on, you can then move on to this lovely piece of software, doesn't do a huge amount um, but it does allow you one to change its physical ID and to also check the firmware and uh, also here we have um, data rates which to be honest I'm not sure how modifying them is going to change anything so I've left them alone so here we have the uh, Vario that's the voltage sensor and that's the current sensor so since I've got the voltage sensor connected it says Com port 8. Um, what I'm going to do is unplug the sensor, hit connect, and down below you'll see it's um, uh, scanning the bus. It hasn't found anything, so I plug my sensor in, which is the voltage sensor, 
Um, it's now found it, and it's called it version 00. So it hasn't read it, but it has uh, connected it. So if I do read all, hopefully at some point, it might decide to have a chat with it. Uh, it hasn't, so what I'm going to do is disconnect and reconnect it and then do read all. Okay, it does help if uh, I'm plugged into the right part of the machine. And there we go. So uh, now it's registered, registered it, it as uh, firmware 1.2. Um, it's got a physical ID of which I could change and then do write parameters. And um, these are the cell voltages and this is the combined voltage. Now, if you get a um, balance lead, making sure you've orientated it the correct way around and plug that in, you'll notice you'll have your cell voltages coming up here. And you'll also notice that you'll have your combined voltage here. Um, and really that's about as much as you can do. Um, if you then um, have a Vario and you wish to have a look at what the Vario is doing, uh, you can plug that in, um, go to Vario, read the parameters, and it's not doing it, so disconnect, connect. Okay, yep, yeah, I've um, numbered it number four. Break the parameters, it says version one. Now, to be honest, I don't sure what, um, um, what version it's all about because it doesn't list it on the uh, website. So, although this is a, an update, um, they might have still listed it as version one. Now, one interesting thing here um, is this number. Now, uh, if I move the Vario, you'll see on the right that it, it registered uh, movement, so we know it's working. Now, it says altitude um, and it has M. You'd naturally assume that this is uh, a number of height in meters. It's not. If you cup your hands around your Vario and blow into the Vario and uh, sort of seal it up as best you can, you'll notice that this will rise up. So in actual fact, this is a pressure. Um, it might be in millibars, uh, I don't know. Um, however, uh, it does appear to be working. And uh, when you plug it onto the, um, or when I plug it onto my, uh, hex. Uh, it also does register zero at zero. Right, um, so that was a reminder for me and um, for anybody else that uh, um, is having difficulties using um, the uh, firmware update software um, on a Mac stroke uh, Windows with Parallels. hope it's been of use and I'll um, do some more when I can um, remember. All right, thanks a lot. Goodbye.